So welcome to part two and me with my infrared camera again. Um, part one we were down over on uh, Chrome Hill and at the bottom of Park House and I wanted to bring you around and show you the location. So this is really part two to my little morning adventure. Uh, it's not morning anymore. We are probably about, yeah, I was going to say 11 o'clock. It's 10 to 11. Um, I've got the infrared, uh, my X-T1 out. Uh, it's got the 16 to 80 mil lens on it and that's what I'm pretty much doing today. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how we park up, where we park up to come to this location and um, yeah, just play with the camera again. It's one of those days where there's not a lot going on, the light's rubbish. It's either take no pictures or play with something new. And I've said already in previous videos that this has given me some inspiration and this looks awesome through this. But does the polarizer work or not? That's the question. You're going to have to watch the video to find out. So I've come around the corner a little bit and uh, you can see the van is down there on the side of the road. So if you're coming up here and you just want to come for a walk and you just want to have a look at the view and take a walk over the hills and stuff like that and you don't want to pay to you know, park in a in the actual field, this is the place to come to. Um, I'll put the what three words on the screen now to where my van's actually parked in front of the bus stop. I've just come through the metal gate, which last time you couldn't do. You had to go back up past the pub and go around the side of the pub and literally walk up the pub wall and round the back. Um, but obviously the gate is easy to come through this time. It's not locked. And uh, as long as you close it now, the sun is very, very bright. I haven't brought my tripod with me. I'm literally just walking up. Um, across the field. Uh, I've got my infrared with me again. It's going to be a big thing, a big part of the channel now, I think, because I enjoy it, especially in the summertime or, you know, blue sky time. From this side, the sun's quite bright and I can see the two hills. Uh, Park House is just such a, such a feature, um, especially from around, if you drive around through the Peak Districts and over this side, you see it in your mirrors and think, whoa, that looks cool. Uh, which is what me and Denise did. So me and Mrs. C decided we had to come and have a look one day, and we did. So we make our way across the field, following the marker, which is just here. And you just keep going towards it. There's a really cool view that you can see both the hills and in the gap in between with a chunk of trees. So I'm gonna see what that looks like on infrared, but if not, this is purely just to show you how to get there and what the view looks like. So you make your way right across the field, go through the next gate, and you'll see the wall on the other side. It's uh, as simple as that, really. It's, it's dead easy. You just need to know where you're going. So when you come in this direction, you just head towards the gate. You see there, just heading towards the gate. And once you get through the gate, you're pretty much on the right side. You can see the path that leads you down. You go through the gate at the bottom of the field again, and uh, you keep going. It does say live stock in the fields. So you need to keep these gates closed and make sure you do pick up your dog poo. Look at that, there's a sign on the gate there. Pick up your dog poo. So there you go. I know there's some people out there that just don't bother and that's just damn right disgusting. So I am just gonna park myself on this hill so I can get a shot from up here, but you can see the path just follows you down. You go down across, down the side of this fence, across the field there, through the gate, through the second gate, across the road, go through the gate again, follow it up through the gate again and then you're going up Park House and I was up on top of that one this morning so yeah for this view this side is pretty bonkers so I'm just going to try and get myself in a position get the camera off my shoulder and uh, to see what this looks like with the sun on it it's going to look like a snowy shot I would have thought with a black sky behind it all right so this will do me we'll have a little look here you've got the farm in the bottom which isn't ideal so you don't want to go too wide the uh, beauty with this lens I've got on here at the moment is it's a 16 to 80, so it's a good wide range. It's just, it's not the sharpest lens in the bunch. Um, but again, it it's, gives you a nice variety of images. 
you know, I can go all the way from 16 mil wide angle to 18, 80 mil zoomed in. Now the lights on the tree at the bottom, quite like that. For some reason I'm not on bracketing. I must have nudged it again when I put it away. So let's just try a couple with a light in different places. And I'm bracketing just to, as a safety net more than anything. I'm at ISO 500, so that way I can handheld. It's saying I'm at 800 for a second. I don't really need to be 500, do I? Let's let's knock it down to 200 and go for a. It's daytime, isn't it? I'll keep the ISO up high on this because that's quite nice. Um, Chrome Hill in the background's got the sun on it, and anything that's got the sun on it through this just looks like a snowbound mountain and the trees have got some sun on it it's just a different way of looking at things and it's for me a, a normal picture with this just wouldn't be very good but through the infrared it's different so what is I'd like to do is I'd like to try and show you what I can see through this camera and I'm not so sure whether I can do it or not, but I'm going to put the video on. I'm just going to hit record if I can. So I'm now recording. It's on widescreen, but you can see in front of me, I've got um, that nice cluster of trees. And then I've got Park House Hill on the left hand side. So it's very jagged looking with a nice little windy path coming up it. And then I've also got um, Chrome Hill in the background there. And you've got this lovely little dark fence leading you all the way up. And when the light comes into different parts of the image and the shadows and the shade, it makes for quite a nice black and white shot. Now, I really don't know whether I can take photos at the same time of video on this camera, which is a shame, but I'm just going to pan around and just show you. You can see where, where the light hits the land, what it does through an infrared camera. It really does make things stand out and them shadows in the sky. I mean, if you point it up to the sky, look how dark the sky goes. It's just black where all the blue is and it looks awesome it makes all the clouds pop out and everything so just by moving it around this is really giving me something you know to to look at and to to view it's it's a it's a much different way you look at the look at the tree down there you know with the light on it but yeah it's just immense there's the wide angle you know you can see the whole i mean that's a great shot i mean if only i could take that right now but i can't i'm going to stop the video but the light on that bottom tree and park house and, and um, chrome mill in the background, you know, that, that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's, uh, I always want to come to these places in the snow and you can't, and I think this is nearly the next best thing. Strangely enough, I was wondering what would happen if I was to uh, put my filter ring on the front and uh, put a polarizer on. Um, I thought it might make the sky deeper, darker, bluer, but it does absolutely nothing. So if you, if you know infrared, could you maybe explain why the polarizer doesn't work? Um, is it because the light's already cut out, probably? Um, because the sensor's only seeing infrared, isn't it? So obviously the polarizer is just irrelevant then. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can video this for you again. I'll just back on the video. Um, yeah, so the polarizer's on and I'm just literally, you can see me spinning it around now. It's just, it does nothing, nothing whatsoever. Even if I aim it around that way, it does nothing and if I aim it, over that way, it just it, it, it does nothing at all, which is dead strange. So, that doesn't work. So let's try something else. Let's put this on that little tripod that you're on. And let's do a long exposure and get some cloud movement. But the cloud's moving so slowly. Am I wasting my time? Because, honest, the cloud isn't moving. I'd have to do like a two minute exposure, wouldn't I? Maybe, I might try it and just see. Just because I'm here and because I've got nothing much else to do this morning other than go back to the van, 
park up for later on and do some editing as you do um, I'm going up to the top of this hill across this field just to have a look and see what the view's like if anything it's going to give me a higher view over Parkhouse and I'll see more of Chrome Hill so I'm just interested to see what it looks like so you come in So while I'm walking up this little hill, and it is only a little one even though it's uphill, I want to talk about this um, and my filters. I've just had my polarizer out and I put it on my camera and I was going to put my long exposure on but the clouds aren't moving. But I use a particular brand of filters that I love, I think they're great. Um, but that particular brand doesn't and isn't interested in me and what I do and me using those filters now i don't want to sound like a dick excuse my french but lots of other companies like knf concept the people that make these little tiny lightweight tripods which are brilliant for vlogging or brilliant for people that can't carry a lot and if you're interested i'll put a link up for this tripod because it weighs about a kilo all carbon fiber very very interesting you've seen other things filters that i've had from knf I'll put the link up for you. You've seen me do Nissi filters. I've even had Freewell filters. Um, you know, I've had lots of stuff from different companies and I know they're only probably using me to get um, advertising and to get their brand out there, but they're using me, so, so be it. You know, I get something from them, they get something from me. But this particular company whose filters I use really aren't interested in me talking about them, mentioning them, or they don't really want to give you anything. There's a couple of other people in the country that, you know, they love to have on their side and things like that, but this particular company wants me to be solely them. So anyone working for them isn't allowed to talk about any other brand of filter. And I'm just, I find that a shame. I love their filters. I use them all the time. It's what I choose to use. It's what I paid for. It's what I bought with my own money. So I am a soul, you know, I am their user. But because I use other filters, and I like to talk about other filters that are given to me, so, you know, I feel obliged to talk about them, but I don't feel obliged to, um, say good things if there isn't good things yeah it's just it's strange how different companies can be very different so you know and I know the I know the director well we spoke many times originally my problem was big mouth a bit of a shotgun and uh, they can't take that risk of me slagging off another company and yeah I've learned that you can't be doing that sort of thing um, wow, yeah, that is a good view. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. I thought it was just a shame. Um, it upsets me sometimes when I think of things like that, that you've got to be so dependent to a tripod, a make, a model. I mean, I started, I started off in the UK, one of the first ever that I've ever seen, talking about Sunway Photo tripods. And I love them, but I've got a KNF in my hand. I talk about it. I've got a Sunway photo, well, it's in the van, it's not on my back. You know what I mean? It's, it's no big deal. I'm a big Benro lover as well. I love my big Benro. It cost me 400 quid, well, it cost me 500 quid, but it's just too big to carry. Anyway, rant and rant done. Let's, uh, let's get a shot of this because now Chrome Hill is higher than Park House. And I just think that looks good as well. So because it's uh, attached to here, see even Peak Designs capture clips, you know, they don't sponsor me, they don't give me anything, but hey ho, I haven't got another one to compare it to. <laughs> that was a waste of time on it. Right, I'm gonna get a shot of this. This is one of them strange videos anyway, I'm just making it up as I go along. I'm really, I'm really not planning anything. I don't plan anything. So let's uh, 
go again iso 200 because we've got loads of light glasses on me head so i can see let's go for a, see it's yeah I, I still like this this is another cracking shot that lovely wall that leads along i'm going to get rid of the tree in the bottom right hand corner there's just sun everywhere at the moment so i'm going to take that and i'm going to wait for a little bit of shade to go in so i've got some shade at the bottom and then it's isolating the tree and chrome hill in the background now when i'm shooting handheld i try to become a tripod so i've got these elbows as you can see here tucked in and then i've got my hand underneath my camera and i'm supporting it with my head so the three points of contact were two elbows two hands and my head that's five points in it but you know what i mean um and that should stabilize the camera quite well and then when i take the photograph i shut up and breathe or i hold my breath like so and that just eliminates my mouth going up and down like it seems to do a lot so let's have a look tight one into chrome hill not so keen i think because now i'm in that position i just think that it it, it lends itself to all three of them perfectly and you can see that ridge line now it's so prominent that that was a barrier reef underneath a tropical sea how amazing is that we've got another little dappled light around what I want, let's put the video back on. So what I want is, there's my hand. So down in this bottom section, I want this to go dark. So I'm waiting for a cloud to go in this bottom section and then some light on a park house and then some, I don't necessarily need the light up in Chrome Hill, but yeah, the trees would be nice to be lit up. And this wall, I'm eliminating this bottom corner, even though that's quite a nice shot going up that way. But I like this one. I like this wall leading you down and round, but I don't like this bright section at the bottom. I just want to tame that down a bit with a little bit of shadow if I can. The actual speed them clouds are moving across the sky is, is pretty fast, you know, to cross the land. They're pretty um, immense. So I've now got my tripod in my hand and you're getting a bit of a wider view of me, which is a bit different perspective as normal. Thought I'd give it a go this morning doing a bit of a tripod handhold thing. So you're getting more of a view, getting a bit more of what's going on around me, a wider angle. And uh, yeah it's a different way of doing video isn't it there's loads of big mushrooms around there as well i daren't touch them because they've probably been really nasty ones this one here for instance is that one of them is that one of them nasty mushrooms that can kill you maybe i don't know there's loads of loads of them around so we are nearly on this top bit where I could probably see over the, the valley the other side. So uh, let's have a bit of a look and see, see what we can see when we get up here. Whew. Let's get up a bit higher. See, I'm looking down the ridge line, but it's starting to lose itself a little bit now. It's not quite as nice as it was from that other angle. There's a couple of little sinkholes up here as well looks like well they are you can see they are but yeah it's not looking quite the same up on this point so let's just get up onto the highest bit and see what it looks like this is the highest little point just here Ooh, some more mushrooms here little red bubbly ones mushrooms yeah you get this lovely Get this lovely ridge line leading through but it's not uh, it's not as photogenic this side it, you need that separation between the two um, it's, it's good it almost looks like it's joined up so I'll wait for there to be a bit of light on it and I'll get one from this angle to show you what it looks like um, yeah it's good but it's it does have it doesn't have that separation of the two hills it almost looks like it's one continuous drag them back. Up 
I think that's it. A lot of cloud come over now, so I'm not getting those blue bits in the sky. So the infrared's not working quite the same. It is patchy, it's blotchy sunlight. I've got, I've come up to the top of this bit. There's a big old hill over there and I can see four people right up on the top of it, right over in the distance. I don't know what hill that is. That might be another one to go and have a look at another day. And yeah, there's, the view up here is just really nice. This is a dead easy walk to come to. If you want to come to an easy view, this is a very, very easy. Cross the field and then where I come through the gate, I just turn left and just walk, pretty much followed the wall up and just come up this side over these little mounds, whatever these little mounds are. I don't know what they are. Um, this has got like a, almost like a perimeter around it, really. If you can see, it's, it's almost like there's a, a perimeter of stones. I don't know whether this was ever thump, ever thump, thump, thumping. I was thu, thu. <laughs> if this was ever something. Um, well, maybe, maybe not. It's, it looks a bit little limestoney as well. It's almost got that sort of thing to it, but you know me, I'm not a geologist, am I? But yeah, let's, uh, let's head back to the van. Let's go and find somewhere to park up for this evening's shot. Um, I'm going over to uh, the Roaches way and I'm gonna go and get the barn and the tree, the classic barn and tree. I've, I've never really shot it for sunset, so that's my plan. A little walk back in the dark because the sun's going down a little bit earlier now, so it's a bit easier to get without being stupid o'clock at night. So that's my plan, watch that on a future video. It won't be the next video because I've got to drop this one in between a couple of others that I've got lined up. So we'll be a bit out of time. Thanks for watching. Do you like the infrared? I know I've asked this before on other videos. Um, it's, it's definitely given me some inspiration. Do you want me to carry on showing you the infrared images or would you prefer me to go back to just doing normal, normal stuff with normal video, normal, uh, normal camera? Um, or grab the extra bonus of seeing a little bit more of me when the weather's like this. Still taking pictures. I'm still setting up compositions. I'm still working out my f-stops. And what I do on the infrared camera, to be honest, on this little XD1, is I tend to keep my f-stop a little bit lower um, or higher, whichever you want it. Um, so I'm sort of shooting five, six to seven, one, if I can remember not to knock the button. Um, the problem with this being analog is you do knock it a little bit. Um, but that's only because I want to keep the speed up because it's normally handheld and that's the reason why. So I've now got to make my way down. Ooh, crumbs, I've got to go right down there to get back to the gate. I'll see you next time anyway. Ciao for now. Drop us a comment. Links in the description below for this little tripod maybe. And uh, see you soon guys. Bye bye.